Sony's PlayStation 2 is, at the time of writing this, the best-selling video game system of all time. This could easily be attributed to its amazing technology, built-in DVD player, and amazing list of games. Sony's list of exclusives is recognizable and has a slew of vile villains to discuss. I'm Caleb with 1UP Binge, and this is PlayStation 2 Villains Evil to Most Evil. Today we'll be talking about exclusives, the villain and game must have first premiered on the PlayStation 2 or stayed exclusive to the system. We'll also be only talking about one villain per series, for sanity's sake. Also, as a note, we'll also be speaking about events outside of PS2 exclusive games covering those that are important, especially for background purposes. Now, let's talk about the various vile villains occupying the bad to evil category. The best of the worst is the King of Sorrow from Klonoa 2, Lunia's Veil. Vale. As his name implies, he's the king who rules over the Kingdom of Sorrow. His kingdom was removed from the rest because the citizens did not want to deal with Sorrow. The king tended to be sad and grim when he is not angered. He intended to use Klonoa as a vessel for all of his anger and sadness so the boy could feel his pain. However, when Klonoa injures him mortally, he begs the boy to help him. He wishes that, even after he dies, the kingdom is put back with the other four. It is implied that he is revived as a small happy baby which ends his infinite sadness. The king didn't particularly do anything bad throughout the story, he was angry and sad and let his emotions control him. The ambiguously motivated Dorman from the Shadow of Colossus is next on our list. Dorman is supposedly the benevolent godlike creature who will revive Mono if Wander slays the 16 Colossi. Dorman guides Wander throughout his quest, giving him hints on how to slay the giant beast and using the boy to revive himself. He manipulates Wander into reviving him, which leads to Wander's death at the hands of Lord Emmon. Dorman then takes over Wander's body and uses it to fight against Lord Emmon, which causes him to be banished again. Dorman's motivations are unknown, and for that, we can't rank him any lower. Hailing from Parappa the Rapper 2, Colonel Noodle ranks next on our list. Colonel Noodle is the son of Beard Burger Master and the one who takes over his shop after his death. He is consistently being made fun of by his workers. He has a severe hate for burgers because of his burger diet exclusive youth and his mother was turned into a burger. He eats noodles and becomes obsessed with using a noodleizer to turn things into noodles. His goal is to take over the world with Noodles, but is stopped by Parappa who tells him to eat other things. Noodle is nothing more than a punk kid, although a very smart one at that. The sacrificial maiden, Kiri Hamiro from Fatal Frame is next. Kiri was a maiden within her home mansion and was raised to be the next rope maiden sacrifice. Since the age of seven, she was forced to undertake the demon tag ritual which cemented her place as a rope maiden. She was kept in seclusion and trapped in a cell for 10 years. She didn't see anyone or anything related to the outside world. She then met a young man she fell in love with, which her family then murdered. When she was sacrificed to close the gates of hell, she still felt guilt for her lover's death and became a vengeful spirit instead of keeping the gates closed. She kills everyone in the mansion and anyone who enters, only leaving a man who looked like her late lover alive. She is eventually forced to keep the hell gate closed and live forever in pain and anguish. Kiri's lashing out is more than justified. While she does some bad things, she's probably one of the most sympathetic villains on this list, landing her here. Patriarch of the Nishikiyama family, Akira Nishikiyama from Yakuza slides into the next spot on our list. Akira grew up in an orphanage alongside series protagonist Kazuma Kiryu. The two eventually joined the Dojima Yakuza family. Akira originally joined the Yakuza to pay for his sister's medical bills and enjoy the family setting enough to try and stop Kiryu from leaving. He is forced against his will to hunt down Kiryu and plans to take him out so he can be tortured by the Yakuza. He treats Kiryu as a true friend throughout most of their lives, but he eventually has to accept Kiryu's decision. He later kills the head of the Dojima family for what he tries to do to his sick sister. He reluctantly lets Kiryu take the fall for this crime. He eventually leads his own family and gets tricked out of 30 million yen, realizing that his sister will die without her heart transplant. 
This realization tells him that he needs to kill anyone if he wants to get to the top, and he takes this to heart. He even tries to kill his friend Kiryu after he gets out of prison and tries to steal his lover because he loved her too. He eventually sacrifices himself to kill Jingyu and stop Kiryu from dying. His self-sacrifice holds him further up than his villainous colleagues, but his past helps a bit with that too. The main villain of Capcom's haunting ground, Lorenzo Belli, is next on our list. Lorenzo is an imperfect clone of Aurolus Belli, who is looking to find the great truth, which has something to do with the creation of the universe. He is responsible for the creation of Ricardo Belli and Ugo Belli, ironically leading to his demise due to Ugo fathering the main protagonist, Fiona. It is also implied that he kidnapped Daniela as a child to become the maid in his mansion. Throughout the game, he is attempting to use Fiona to create a true clone of Aurolus Belli. In the end, he leads to his demise by leading Fiona to his hideout. He lands here because unlike the previous entrant, his goals are atrocious considering it involves the kidnapping of Fiona. The coming storm has arrived. Next up is Devil May Cry's Virgil. Virgil is the elder twin brother of the main protagonist, Dante, and the son of Sparta. Virgil is obsessed with power, possibly due to the loss of his mother, Eva. After his mother's death, Virgil decided to embrace his demonic side over his human side. Virgil, from then on, desired to have all the power he could possibly have and would do anything for Sparta's power. Virgil cares very little about those around him, not even his brother or son, even tearing his son's arm off to get the Yamato back. However, he is still an honorable fighter and despises fighting dirty in any way, shape, or form. He refuses to fight with his brother because he was weak from a previous fight. He will even join forces with Dante if there's a bigger threat they need to slay. Virgil is a power-hungry and hateful of humans, however, for his honor and his painful life, he can't rank lower. The sole human member of the four devas, Azel from God Hand, is in our next spot. Azel is the cool-headed and eloquent holder of the left God Hand, which he stole when he betrayed the God Hand clan. We find that Azel stole the God Hand just for the sake of power, much like Virgil before him. He gets pretty powerful with the new God Hand, killing the three evil stooges in mere moments when they turn against him. He gathers a ton of allies trying to kill Jean, even using Dr. Ion's giant Kilo Crab. He considers himself the Devil Hand to Jean's God Hand. He wants to kidnap Olivia to use as a vessel for Angra. However, he is tricked into becoming Angra's vessel and his fate is sealed by losing to Jean. Azel ranks higher than Virgil because unlike the son of Mundus, he betrayed his clan. He then killed plenty of people and demons, ranking him here on this list. Next up on our list is Iko's The Queen. The Queen is the ruler of the castle and the mother of the main love interest in the game. By the time we reach the story of the game, her body is deteriorating and she wants to take her daughter's body for her own. She relies on her minions to try and slay Aiko so that she can use Yorda as a spiritual vessel. She even locks the two of them off from the mainland so they couldn't escape. She turns her daughter to stone and almost kills Aiko. Even after her death, she destroys the castle she was in, making it impossible to do anything. The queen has done many atrocious things and the only reason she doesn't fall further is that she doesn't make a lot of appearances during the game. The main villain of Manhunt, Lionel the Director, Starkweather, is our next villain. Lionel was once a successful director in Vinewood, whose movie started to flop later on in his career. He then grew obsessed with the violent acts and began directing snuff films and adult videos. He even started working with criminals and murderers to make his films even more realistic. This leads to him utilizing his films to exact his revenge on those who led to the failure of his career. He then released releases the main character, Cash, from death row by bribing the prison and uses him to film even better movies using his murders. However, he even tries to kill Cash once Cash stops following his orders. The director lands here because unlike the queen, he has a considerable body count. Hailing from Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, is our next villain, Solidus Snake. 
Solidus is the third son of Big Boss, created to be the perfect clone of Big Boss using his actual DNA. After being created, he joined the Liberia Civil War and killed plenty of people during this war, even killing Raiden's parents. He would then essentially kidnap Raiden and other boys, creating his child soldier unit, with Raiden being his best soldier. He was later installed as the 43rd President of the United States by the Patriots. He had a hard stance on nuclear disarmament. He is also the one responsible for the Shadow Moses incident that took place in the first Metal Gear Solid. After being removed from the presidency, he formed the Sons of Liberty, where he took over the Big Shell facility. He stole Solid Snake's identity, intended to steal Arsenal gear, kidnapped James Johnson and Raiden, and tried to kill Solid Snake. His main goal was to reveal the Patriots by exploding a nuclear weapon over New York, destabilizing Wall Street and harming plenty of people. He may not have the number of bodies under his belt that Starkweather does, but his plan is much bigger in scale than his. The next villain on our list is Clockwork from Sly Cooper. Clockwork was a giant owl and the main rival of the Cooper clan of raccoons. He has lived for thousands of years and has fought with the Cooper clan for his entire lifetime. He hates and envies the Cooper clan due to the Thievius Raccoonus, which makes the Coopers the best thieves in the world. Because of this, he kills Sly's parents and steals the aforementioned book from them to become the greatest thief in the world. However, he allowed Sly to live because he believed that Sly would be nothing without the tone. By the time we hit the main series, he is building death rays and kidnapping Carmelita Fox to lure Sly into a gas chamber. His actions are done mostly out of spite. He has plenty of kills under his belt, even building a massive death ray. He ranks below Solidus because he actively wants to kill people and Solidus does not. The main villain of Dark Cloud 2, Griffin, is the next villain on our list. Griffin was a moon person and the wielder of the orange Atlamali. When he was younger, he had a fondness for flowers and was a good friend to Queen Alexandra. The queen made him leave when enemies attacked and she died, which made Griffin succumb to his sorrow and hatred for humans. This leads him to start planning the erasure of humanity. He creates the dark element, which corrupts him even further, leading him to stealing the other Atlamilla. His plan to erase humanity is what ranks him so low. However, his tragic backstory is what stops him from falling much further, leaving him here near the middle. The ultimate symbol of darkness, Yami from the game Okami ranks next, but not at the bottom. Yami is an evil god from long ago who has been sealed away, being called the absolute ruler of all evil beings. He was the vessel of darkness for an evil spirit named Akuro. He was responsible for the Ark of Yamato genocide where he wiped out thousands of Celestials aboard the Ark of Yamato. He stole all of Amaterasu's powers and tried to kill the Celestial Dog. After she got her powers back, he would then destroy her Celestial Brush and their respective constellations in hope of destroying her. He ranks here because he is actively responsible for thousands if not millions of deaths compared to Griffin, who only got as far as planning that. But genocide is not the only crime that we talk about, just ask God of War Zeus, who ranks next. Zeus is the king of the Greek gods and the father of Kratos, who was raised by Gaia to slay his father Kronos. Zeus freed his siblings from their father's stomach and then betrayed Gaia, who raised him and then sent the Titans to Tartarus. He is responsible for hundreds of atrocious actions, including but not limited to chaining Prometheus to the hand of Typhon and having an eagle eat his liver every day. He also killed Kratos' brother Demios. Initially, he didn't slay Kratos, even helping him in his quest against Ares. However, when Pandora's box was open, Zeus was infected with fear, which led to his first Further actions. He kills Kratos and sends him to Hades after stealing his god powers. He banished his son Hephaestus to Tartarus and destroyed all of Sparta just for worshipping Kratos as the god of war. He is also a coward, running from battle when losing, having his brothers and other gods fight Kratos in his stead. Zeus is not only a traitor and a pompous prick, he is also a massive coward. But he can't land lower because he was infected by Pandora's box. However, even that doesn't absolve all of his actions. Speaking of pompous people, Vayne Solidor is up next from Final Fantasy XII. We've talked about Vayne before, and his name is not far off as he is a very vain individual. Vayne is the heir to the throne after killing his brothers and masterminded the attacks on Nabradia and Dalmasca. 
He conspires with the Venant and Dr. Sid to give him the reins of history and become a true ruler. He orders the execution of Vaughn because the boy attempted to strike him. He's responsible for the betrayal and framing of Bosch and has each of the judges arrested for supposed regicide. He becomes a ruthless ruler of Ivalis and has Drace executed because they dared to question him. He has Dr. Sid spill mist all over Ivalis to help destroy it and become a giant dragon to do so. Vane may not have the power of Zeus, but his actions place him here because unlike Zeus, he wasn't controlled by an outside force. Calling upon his persona to reach out on our fourth spot on the list is Persona 4's Toru Adachi. Adachi was a police detective who became an officer only so he could carry a gun around. He was born into a family with high standards who only cared about his success and grades. But despite everything, he was still poor and forced to eat boiled cabbage for days on end, which led him to resenting anything he considered boring. He was given access to the Midnight Channel and began to use his power for many different actions. He accidentally kills the woman he was supposed to protect by leaving her to be eaten alive by shadows. He then threw plenty of people into the Midnight Channel deliberately for plenty of foolish reasons. He threw one woman in because she slapped him, manipulates Namatame into doing his dirty work for him, and pushes Mitsuo for some unknown reason. However, his murder spree is nothing more than a game to him, threatening the protagonist's family if he tries to stop him. He even gives the protagonist hints about his murders. However, his main goal is to create a massive rift between the worlds to allow shadows to rule and destroy the human world. Adachi may not have the power of Zeus or the control of Vane, but he is a serial killer who has no morals. He easily cracks the top 5 due to his insane nature that can't even be described. Grabbing the bronze medal of evil is Errol from the Jack and Daxter series. Errol is Jack's rival, commander of the Crimson Guard, and right hand man of Baron Praxis. Originally, he was little more than a minion to a greater evil. He follows Praxis' order by kidnapping Jack for the Light Warrior Project, attempting to kill Jack, and arresting Jack before he breaks the law. But when he comes back as a cyborg Errol in Jack 3, he leads an army of KG Deathbots and leads the Metalheads. His goal is to dominate the world and eventually destroy it and all organic life. He even manages to eliminate all light eco in the world, which causes plenty of damage. He ranks lower than Adachi because not only is his plan genocide of all organic life, but he can act upon his insanity to a much higher degree than the serial killer. Now we've reached the Silver Medal of Evil, which belongs to Spectre from the Ape Escape series. Spectre was originally an albino monkey who held a juggling act in the circus until he found a helmet that increased his intelligence. After becoming smarter, he freed many monkeys from the circus. He decided that humans weren't worthy of being top of the food chain. He then tries to overtake the world multiple times in a multitude of ways. He mind controls Jake and turns him into a drone, tries to trap and kill Spike, and intends to make all humans lose their will to fight. He destroys an entire highway with the Super Goliath and intends to use mass mind control to rule the world. However, his worst action is his intention to chop the entire world in half to rule one half of the world. He even almost manages this but fails in the end thanks to Spike and the rest of them. He only grabs silver because, unlike some villains, he can put his hatred aside to work along Spike to defeat Pipatron Meta. A similar evil scientist grabs the gold medal of evil and that's Ratchet and Clank's Dr. Nefarious. Nefarious is an evil scientist who was bullied in school by future hero Captain Quark. This leads him to attempt to destroy all life on the planet Vilgar and invading Metropolis with a swarm of insectoids. But his main goal has always been to turn all organic life into robots. If that doesn't work, he would rather just disintegrate all of organic life. He kidnapped Clank and made a replacement named Clunk. He turned all of Metropolis into robots and tricked an alien race into thinking he had good intentions with the Universal Clock. He has attempted to conquer the universe at least 80 times and barely fails every time. Even though he can put aside his differences with Ratchet and Clank, his goals and multitude of attempts to complete these goals are the most heinous on this list. Dr. Nefarious may be the most nefarious villain, but we have a few additional medals to hand out. The Darwin Medal goes to Clockwork. He throws out hundreds of years of clan rivalry by letting Sly live, and this leads to his demise. 
Grabbing the Pride Medal is the gold medalist Dr. Nefarious. Throughout the series, he consistently thinks he's smarter than everyone else and thinks his tricks work on anyone other than Quark. The Sloth Medal easily goes to the King of Sorrow. He is so sad that he does practically nothing for years. It's an easy pick. It's no surprise the Greed Medal belongs to the director. He kills dozens of people all because his movies started to flop. He even releases a death row prisoner just to get payback for the money he lost. The Gluttony Medal goes to the only food-related character on this list, Colonel Noodle, who wants to turn everything into noodles. Maybe a surprising pick, but the Lust Medal is for Kira Hamiro, who becomes a spirit because of her love for a man and kidnaps another guy because he looks similar. But the Envy Medal is for Virgil, who envies Eva's loves for her other son Dante and envies the amount of power Mundus has, sending him on his quest. Finally, the Glorious Wrath Medal rightfully belongs to Zeus, who in Greek myth and God of War does millions of heinous things. However, we put special emphasis on the fact that he was tricked and killed his son because he was afraid and angry. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. And if you need a one-up, hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlists, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite games. Thanks for watching.